In this video, you're going to learn the best practices for your Google Shopping campaigns. These are things that we do for all our clients when we scale their shopping campaigns from zero to over 700K per month. When we audit accounts that are losing money, we often find these sort of issues not being rectified. These accounts are often just flushing money down the drain. So pay attention because these best practices can really level up your shopping campaigns for your e-commerce store. Follow them step by step and watch your sales and profits skyrocket. Okay, the first mistake we see people making that has the biggest impact on your shopping campaigns is not optimizing your product feed. Optimizing your product feed just means adjusting the attributes within your product data feed. This means the title, the image, the description, and all the other attributes in your feed that make up the data that Google uses to show in your shopping ads. Google needs this data to know what your products are and who to show them to. If you don't optimize this, you're missing out on the massive power of Google's machine learning algorithm. Now, we rarely see anyone do this properly. Now, it's great for our clients because we do this, so we can better beat the competition and generate more sales and more profits for them. But for other people out there, it's so, so important. By the way, we do have a mini course on setting up your Merchant Center account and optimizing your product feed. I'll leave a link to that down below. First, you need to start by optimizing your product titles. Titles have the biggest impact on your shopping campaigns and your Performance Max campaigns. Your product title will be used to match the product to the shopper's search. So what are the best practices for optimizing titles in your product feed? Google allows you to have a maximum of 150 characters in your product title. Shoppers will generally only see the first 70 characters depending on their screen size. So we make sure to put the most important details first. Here are a couple of examples of a well-optimized product title. To do this, log into your Merchant Center account. On the left-hand menu under your business, click products. Here you will see a list of all the products you have uploaded to your Merchant Center account. Click the pencil icon next to the product you want to optimize. Add the most important details about your product first. This includes product type, brand name, gender size, and color. In my case, the product is a dog crate, so I will write heavy duty dog crate with wheels, 48 inches, silver. The goal is to match the keywords in the titles with what your customers search for on Google. The other incredibly important part of your product feed is your image. A powerful product image grabs attention, drives more clicks and more sales for that product. Most people just let the feed pull the first image on their Shopify store and not think any more about this. Your image is what captures the attention of your buyers. It's a huge opportunity to stand out amongst your competitors, get the click and get the purchase. Here's how we choose the best image when we optimize the product feeds of our clients. First, we go to Google search ourselves. We search for the product and see what other competitors are using in their ads. Here's an example. Which product stands out? Obviously, this one right here. This one is gonna get the lion's share of the traffic, which means more sales and more profits for that competitor and less for you. So choose the image for your products that stands out. If you're dropshipping and you only have the images that this supplier has created, Get your own taken. This has a huge impact on performance and gives you the much needed edge you need over competitors. Now, Google's policies will prefer a simple product image on a white background with no promotional text or overlays. But what we've found is that lifestyle images like these generally perform a lot better. Try it out and see how it affects the click-through rate for these products in your shopping campaign. You might be surprised. The next thing we want to optimize in our product feed is our Google product category. Google has a big list of all its product categories. You need to choose the right one for your store and match it for each product. Google needs this information to better understand what your products are and who to show them to. Most people don't do this. It's very easy to do and it gives you a much needed edge over your competition. Next, go through and fill in all the optional fields in your product feed. Many people skip these, but adding these in gives Google much more information about your products. Google tends to prioritize products with much more rich data. Take the time to add this in and you'll see much better results for your shopping campaigns. Okay, so now you've optimized your product feed, you need to be checking your Merchant Center account every single day. Log in and check what products need attention. This means fixing disapprovals and errors as soon as you can. Every time your product is disapproved, it's removed from your campaigns. 
This means no more views, no more clicks, and no more sales. What's worse is that the momentum that you've built up just dies. This is why we check the Merchant Center accounts regularly for our clients. We're fixing disapprovals as soon as we see them. This helps to give us upward momentum and get more profits for our client stores. We have an in-depth video on how to fix product disapprovals. I'll leave a link to that playlist down below. You really have no excuses, guys. Let's get these product disapprovals fixed and get more sales and profits from our shopping campaigns. Real quick, guys, if you wanna get more results from your ad campaigns and grow your e-com store profitably, check out Keycom Academy. It's a community web created to help you guys grow your store profitably. It has step-by-step -step courses, live coaching calls every single week where we help you grow your ads profitably. And we have an engaged community of honest e-com store owners just like yourself building authentic, genuine, e-com stores. We make it as valuable as possible, helping you grow your store. So check it out. I'll leave a link down below and I'd love to see you on the inside. Now the next most important part of your shopping campaigns are your campaign settings. First, we have your campaign goal. Make sure to double check that you're using purchased as your primary goal. We do this to tell Google to optimize for sales only. Don't use multiple goals. It confuses the Google algorithm. Stick with one primary goal and make it sales. Let's take a look at some other campaign settings and best practices. Go to your Google Shopping campaign settings, click goals, and choose campaign specific goals. Select your primary goal as a purchase. Next, within your campaign settings, go to targeting and uncheck search partner network. We're doing this to focus solely on the Google search network first. Once we've dominated it, we can come back and enable the search partner network. Next, make sure to select only your main targeted country. Another important setting you want to make is under the location option. You want to select present, people in or regularly in your included locations. This will save you a ton of money and bring relevant traffic to your website. Next, let's talk about targeting in our Google Shopping campaigns. We recommend splitting your shopping campaign by different product types. The benefit is that you can review the search terms for each product type effectively. This ensures you're getting the right traffic and not wasting your ad budget. Now, another benefit of this is being able to adjust the campaign budget based on performance. If one campaign isn't performing well, reduce its budget and allocate that budget to a better performing campaign. Finally, you can also adjust the target ROAS for each campaign based on the profitability of that product type. Next, let's talk about the bidding strategy. Many store owners find this part very confusing, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through this right now. We generally recommend starting your shopping campaign with manual bidding. This gives more control over your bidding at the beginning. This allows you to give Google's algorithm enough data to optimize effectively. Once you've gathered data, switch over to a target ROAS bidding strategy. This strategy tells Google to adjust your bids based on your targeted profitability, your target ROAS. And by the way, if you're not sure how to set up target ROAS, click the link below. I've got a video on how to do this. We've created a sheet that automatically calculates your breakeven ROAS once you just add your profit margin. Check your current ROAS and then increase your bid slightly to push for more profitability. For example, if your ROAS or your breakeven ROAS is three, you could push for four or five. What you're doing here is giving Google some guidance, telling it the return that you'd like to aim for. Now be careful, don't go setting a ROAS much, much higher of 10 or 15. In reality, that can actually hurt your performance. Google will start looking for people that will convert at a much higher ROAS. This will usually lead to much fewer conversions. So we recommend setting your target ROAS to about 20 to 50% above your breakeven ROAS. However, keep this in mind. After switching to a new target ROAS, you may experience a temporary decrease in traffic and conversions. This is normal as Google starts to learn your target ROAS and optimize towards it. Be patient and allow the algorithm time to adjust. We recommend giving it at least two weeks to optimize. The next really important practice for your Google Shopping campaigns is to regularly review your search terms report and add negative keywords. This helps prevent wasting money on clicks from people that usually wouldn't buy from you. Over time, it'll save your budget and help make your campaigns much more effective and profitable. Here's an example. Inside your Google Shopping campaign, go to Insights and Reports and click on Search Terms. Since this campaign sells saunas, we want to make sure the search queries match our products. For example, here's a search query for sauna jokes that doesn't match our product. We'll add it as a negative keyword because this type of search is unlikely to convert. 
we will select this search term and click add to negative keywords. That's it guys, they're the best practices for your Google Shopping campaigns that we use to help make our clients more money, more profits. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Make sure to check out our other videos. This one here might be especially useful for you.